So chapter 15 is going to talk about the solubility of uh, insoluble salt. We are going to first focus on the calculation. In this chapter, the things we want to calculate is so-called the solubility. Where we actually define the solubility in chapter 10 previously, right? The solubility is actually the maximum amount of solutes that can dissolve inside your solvent or in the solution at a given temperature. There are two types of solubilities. Okay, in this chapter, one is so called the molar solubility, the other one is called the gram solubility. These two are very different terms, and you want to pay close attention what is the term that your problem asks. For the molar solubility, you're going to have a unit of number of mole of solute dissolved in a liter of your solution. Basically, it's just your molarity. For your gram solubility, actually have the unit of gram per liter. The way these two was connected with each other is that if you multiply the formula weight of your salt, then you can actually convert your molar solubility to the gram solubility. We know the unit of your molecular weight is gram per mole, right? So if you use this, multiply that, that actually give you, give you this gram per liter uh, unit. So you want to pay close attention and see what is the term that your problem is actually asking. Another very important thing that you should know is actually for all the calculation in this chapter, every time you write out this equilibrium constant equals to the solubility product, the unit of those calculations has to be in your molar solubility. If you use gram solubility, you won't get the correct answer. What you really do is actually you always, always use molar solubility to do all your calculation. But at the very end, if the question is asking you the gram solubility, you just multiply its formula weight to convert your molar solubility to gram solubility. So don't do any calculations using the grain solubility. Let's look at a few examples so you will know what the KSP means. Of course, the K is actually the equilibrium constant. SP stands for the solubility product. And as we learned previously, if it's actually pure solid or pure liquid, it did not go into your expression, right? That's why you can see here, I want to write out the product raised to the stoichiometry coefficients. The only thing that's th that you need to be careful is that you know, right now you always have this uh, insoluble salt to start with. So insoluble salt means actually it existing in the pure solid form. Therefore, it doesn't go into your equations. The things that matters in the KSP calculation is actually your product concentration. So this is actually one example. Assuming today you have Ag2CrO4, which is an uh, insoluble salt, it's going to dissociate very, very slightly and produce your Ag plus and CrO4 minus. One thing that's actually important for this chapter is that you need to be familiar with. Can you actually write the things to this with proper coefficients? So those are the things that you need to practice a lot. Okay, every time you see a compound, if I say this is an insoluble salt, you can actually write out the equation yourself. And once you write these things out, going from here to here is actually very straightforward, right? So silver to the second power, Cr over two minus to the first power. So that's all the things you need to know to write out the KSP equation. I'm going to just go through the question directly so that you can actually see what you're going to have okay, in your homework. In this question, it says the solubility product constant, solubility product constant of a certain species is a certain value. Calculate the concentration of Ca plus and F minus in a saturated solution of calcium fluoride and determine the solubility of calcium fluoride in grams per liter. Okay, so let's have a typical question you're going to see in chapter 15. 
Every time you see these things, I will just translate the things I highlight. That is actually your KSP is going to equals to 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11. And then you want to calculate your solubility as a unit of gram per liter. First step is actually you really actually write out your equations. You know, since it already says it's actually solubility product constant, right? What it really tell you is actually the things we are talking about here is a uh, insoluble salt. Okay, every time you see something of KSP, what it implies actually we are going to have a uh, insoluble salt, and the salt is actually your calcium fluoride. So this guy, the calcium fluoride is going to dissociate very slightly to produce Ca2 plus and the two F minus. So you want to ask yourself, can I actually write these things out by myself? There's something that you need to actually practice. Once you write these things out, then you can actually know the KSP equation should equal to your calcium 2 plus to the first power, or I minus to the second power. So how about the solubility? So in the beginning, remember the solubility we're going to use for our calculation has to be the molar solubility, right? So assuming the solubility of your calcium is S. Okay, that's the molar solubility for calcium 2 plus. And then for your four right here, because the coefficient, there's a coefficient of 2, right? So the solubility will be 2S. Then once you see these things, then you just write this is actually S for your calcium 2 plus to the first power. That's 2S. For your f minus for the second power. So once you do this, you know this will be s times 4s squared, that's 4s cubed. Okay, so you know the KSP is going to equal to 4s cubed, and it's going to equal to this constant, right? So it's 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11. And then you're going to solve for your S. So you know your S is going to equal to 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11 divided by 4. And then you take QP root of this. Then you can get a number of 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4 M. The unit after you do all this calculation, it will be your molar solubility. Okay, you want to convert molar solubility to the grain solubility, right? So the things you do will be your molar solubility times the formula weight of the salt. It's actually of the salt in this case will be your CaF2. It is the molecular weight of your salt, not your product of your salt. So CaF2 have a molecular weight of 78.1 gram per mole. Okay, therefore we know here will be 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4 multiply 78.1. That's going to give you a number of 0 0.016 gram per liter. So this will be the answer that you should input. All right. So you're going to see these type of questions uh, evolve a little bit, okay, depending on the equations. Here I actually summarize a few equations that you probably will see in your homework. So based on the equation, you know the corresponding solubility will change, right? For example, in the very last example here, the coefficient will actually eventually dictate the way you write out your solubility. So you want to actually make sure you know how to write out the equation properly. Therefore, you know what is the proper solubility representation for your product. Therefore, you can actually plug those things in and then solve for the solubility accordingly. Let's look at another one. OK, so previously what we have is actually uh, I give you a salt, I give you a KSP, right? And I ask you to solve for the solubility. This question is actually the reverse. I give you a salt, OK? I tell you what the solubility is. Calculate that KSP for me. OK, it's just the reverse of the process. Here, the only thing you want to be careful is actually when you look at the 
solubility it provides inside the questions. 99% of the time it's going to give you the grain solubility. And you should have a concept that I cannot do my calculation using grain solubility. What you need to do is actually convert your grain solubility, which is actually 0 0.029 gram per liter, back to your molar solubility. To do this, you need to actually know what is the formula weight of your Ag2CrO4. So the formula weight of your Ag2CrO4 is 331.73, right? So if you go from the gram to molar, what you do is actually you divide your grain solubility by the formula weight. Then you can get your molar solubility, which is going to equal to 8.7 times 10 to the negative 5. So that will be actually the first step. So once you know your molar solubility, the next thing is actually, okay, you want to write out your equation. Ag2CrO4 is going to become 2Ag plus plus CrO4 2 minus. The so solubility will be 2S for your Ag, S for your CrO4 2 minus. Okay, therefore your Ksp is going to equal to 2S to the second power, S to the first power, and that will give you 4S cubed. Then the only thing that remains is actually just to plug in this one into your solubility, which is 4 times 8.7 times 10 to the negative 5 to the third power. Then you're going to get a number of 2.6 times 10 to the negative 12. That will be actually your final KSP. So the key here is really like you should know, step number one, convert the grain solubility to the molar solubility. Once you have done that, then you write out your equations. Therefore, you know how the KSP was connected with your solubility, right? In this case, your KSP is 4S cubed, right? And then you just plug in your molar solubility, and you can get the correct answer, okay? So it's actually very simple.